Hey guys, alright, so in today's tutorial I'm going to be introducing you to a pretty overlooked feature within Marvelous Designer which is the wind controller. So I'll be showing you how to set up this flag which is really simple to do by the way. I'll show you how we can even modify this flag further by tearing it up a little bit, uh, making it look worn and torn and then um, I'll show you how we can also use the wind modifier uh, to create like this dynamic uh, drapery on characters uh, by making a cape blowing the wind and then I'll also show you how we can actually export this out of Marvelous Designer and take it to other programs that we can render with the render engine of our choice. Uh, so I hope you guys are ready. It's going to be a fun tutorial and this is a really cool feature within Marvelous Designer. So I hope you guys are ready and without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let me show you how I set up this flag and um, okay, I'm going to start completely from scratch. I'm going to go to my display and hide that wind controller. And then, um, as you can see in the workspace over here, here's my uh, flag pole. And then I just use the rectangular tool. So just draw the rectangle like that. You'll see it in your 3D space. Click in your 3D space and just navigate, rotate, and bring it into the correct position. All right, so I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to go back to this one I've already created over here. And to get it back in that default position, I'm going to right click go on reset 2d arrangement selected there we go i'm going to bring that over here and rotate that into position and again i'm just re reusing this one because i just felt that it was at the correct di dimensions for what i was doing but again it's so simple it's just a rectangle guys All right so once you've got that into position uh, you'll see over here, if I zoom in quickly, there's these dotted lines. And now this is really important because uh, what we're basically doing here is these corner pieces, we're basically tacking it onto our flagpole so that it holds the flag into position uh, at these two particular points uh, we have created. it. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to delete my tack. Here at the top, uh, you'll see that there's an option called Tack on Avatar. So go ahead, select that. And uh, let me delete this first of all. So I'm going to go to edit, edit based in, right click on your delete and right click delete. Okay, so once you guys are on uh, tech on avatar, like I said, I'm basically tacking the corners onto the avatar. So it's self explanatory, but just to show you, you want to select the corner piece over here. And then you want to choose where you want to tack that on. Uh, I've got tack on avatar selected, right? So click here by the corner. You'll get that dotted line that pops up. Come on. And I want to tack mine onto this area over here. As you can see, it creates like a connection. It's maybe a little bit too far down. So I want to tack it on over there. And then here at the bottom, I want to tack this uh, onto that area. So I can go ahead, if I click on simulation now, uh, again, this flag's actually blowing. If I go to display wind control, let me turn off the wind for a moment because your, your flag's obviously not going to be blowing in the wind like that. So I want to go back to uh, select move, select that wind control and just turn off the wind. So this is what you guys are basically going to have once you've tacked it on there. You're going to have your flag over here. Uh, now. It might be a little bit wonky depending on the design of your pole, but if it just starts uh, interacting or going through the pole, obviously you just use the simulate the power of simulation to pull it out of the pole. So there we go. You can see that's been tacked onto those areas. That's exactly where I want it. All right. And now from here, um, we're going to be using the wind modifier. So again, you guys have seen where I went. Uh, just to show you again, go to display and click on show wind controller and you're going to get this icon that pops up somewhere in your workspace uh, now i've moved mine uh, over here obviously the wherever you position this controller is going to determine where the wind is blowing again self-explanatory uh, but obviously I'm just going to explain all of this stuff to you and yeah we've got the property editor and then you can go ahead click on activate so you'll see that if we turn on simulation now I've got a flag blowing in the wind. Now, obviously, yours is probably not going to be blowing as smooth as mine because we have to adjust some settings here. But you'll see wherever I move that controller, 
is going to determine where the wind is blowing so really neat pretty cool feature if you guys want to simulate wind and now over here in the property editor I haven't delved into too much of this stuff uh, too much but uh, obviously uh, the type you can choose planar which is like a planar wind direction or spherical uh, the strength really important this is obviously going to determine the strength of our wind so I found 7000 to be a good speed you'll see if I put this on something like 15,000 uh, we're gonna get um, this wind that's pretty strong you can see it's starting to tug on this area quite violently um, but if we wanted to make this a really violent uh, looking wind uh, we'd actually play, uh, play around with this feature over here called turbulence so you'll see that I put mine really low so that uh, the wind that's blowing is a little bit more calmer a little bit more smoother but if you put this on something like maybe 15 uh, you're gonna get some interruptions and turbulence it's gonna be like a really I'd say maybe a little bit more realistic or bumpy uh, wind uh, animation but again I'm not 100% familiar with this terminology um, you guys can always Google uh, and just check a little bit more to get deeper insight into these settings but uh, I did put my turbulence pretty low I put that on two I never played around with the frequency or the decay and then the strength I just put on 7000 and uh, that was basically it guys and it gave me this flag that's blowing in the wind like this and it was really that simple to set up so I'm actually going to load uh, my previous flag project because that's the one uh, that I was happy with so just file uh, open project I don't want to save that and uh, whoops I think it's on the desktop yeah, there we go load that in so again click on play and you guys should have your flag animation similar to mine if you follow those uh, similar settings and again you guys can go and learn the stuff a little bit deeper to understand frequency decay or just play around with that put in random values and see how your cloth interacts with those values that's also another way just experiment uh, to continue learning guys so once you've done that again like I said earlier we can actually export this animation out of marvelous designer so once you're ready go to the animation workspace over here and uh, again we can let this record for as long as we want so I'm probably gonna let mine go up until no just to keep this tutorial I don't want to make this tutorial too long because uh, this is really simple to explain let's just go up until maybe 90 so you guys can make this animation go on for as long as you want I'll stop over there what is that 107 okay and um, again I'm just selecting real time just to see uh, okay obviously I want to put that on one times because this is the default this is probably what it's going to look like uh, look like in another 3d program then once I'm done with this go back to simulation select that shape go to file export an Alembic HD5F and uh, you'll see it saves it as a .abc file now really important here guys you want to select this frame relative sample because if you don't select this it's not going to render out all of those frames so I noticed that if this is unselected it only renders out 35 frames so when you select that and I leave mine on 30 it's going to render out the entire 107 frames and then obviously you want to put the scale relative to the scale you use that you uh, imported your flag pole at so click on OK there we go it's saving out all 107 frames of the animation and just to show you guys um, I'm using Cinema 4D I'll go file merge objects import that I'm going to import my flag pole first of all and then I'm going to import the flag blowing in the wind now again I'm not sure with other programs or settings but uh, just make sure that the frame rate's the same uh, my scale is the same scale as the flagpole click on OK okay so I'm <laughs> I'm way off um, I think that's because I actually imported my flag at uh, 10 instead of 1 yeah there we go so I was supposed to leave that on 1 and not 10 so I've got it at the same scale and then uh, we've got 107 so I'm gonna put my frames on here yeah, 107 click enter so from 0 to 107 will be our animation so you'll see if I click on play we've got a flag 
in Cinema 4D and then of course I'm using Octane so I can go ahead and uh, apply materials on this Let me just bring this up. Uh, probably want to click on pause. There we go. Hit that update. And you guys can render uh, some animations, as you can see, with Octane. Uh, whatever render you, uh, whatever render engine uh, you guys are using. So using the power of Marvelous Designer to get a flag animated in another program using that alembic format so i'm going to go ahead close that and again if you guys want some more uh, detail with this flag obviously you just select the flag and you can see my particle distance is very high it's on 30 uh, but again um, it depends if you're doing a close-up you probably want to maybe reduce that so maybe you see some more details in those folds so it's, let's actually put this on like Actually, no, if I, if I reduce my particle distance now, the simulation time is going to take a lot longer uh, to simulate, but it is going to make it more detailed. So that's how you create an animated flag, guys. Really simple. And I want to show you another example uh, with a character with some clothing and how you can use wind uh, to create some dynamic drapery. All right, guys, actually, before I get onto the dynamic drapery with the character, uh, there's actually some other cool ways you can play around with this flag. And I want to show you, you can just go in your workspace over here. And if we use the add point, I'm just going to add a couple of points here. So I'll add three like that. Three over here. Maybe three here. Maybe another three over there. And then if I go to the edit pattern and I select those middle points and I drag this back, you'll see that we can maybe start creating what appears to be like a, uh, maybe a torn torn flag but obviously you want to go back in here add more points and uh, start playing around with this modifying the shape uh, maybe curving out certain areas modifying the shape uh, to get uh, something that looks a little bit more accurate to something that's torn uh, so go ahead do some research to look at torn fabric uh, it probably is going to take a little bit of time uh, but as you can see now if I click on simulation now we've got like this torn uh, flag that's just blowing in the wind so that's like one way we can uh, have some fun with it and create maybe a torn flag um, again maybe you've done that you can also come back here I'm using the sorry I'm using the uh, internal polygon and sketch some torn pieces in here again this is really random guys I'm not using any reference for this I'm just basically showing you the techniques and if I select all of these internal shapes right click we can convert this to a whole so you can see we can make it even more uh, more detailed and more complex if you're going for a torn a torn flag so that's just another way to have fun with this flag guys uh, using the power of marvelous designer right so let's get on to the next section where I'll show you how we can use the wind modifier for uh, dynamic drapery Right, guys, so here's another example. You can see I've created like this hood or uh, this cape for this character. And I just want to show you how you can create uh, maybe some dynamic poses for your garments, uh, basically creating this dynamic drapery. So in this case, uh, this can cause some issues because, again, when something's blowing in the wind, this is probably going to uh, intersect with the, the pants over here in the top. So if you've got some uh, underlying garments like this, uh, what I'll do is... I'm going to select all of that. Obviously, just, let me just reduce my particle distance. I'm actually going to put both of them on 30 for now, just so this runs a bit smoother. Uh, but I'll select this undergarment. And uh, I'll right-click and go to Freeze. And I'll just move this out of the way. Because, again, I want the wind to interact with our cape over here. And then I can bring that back. So, again, go into uh, Display. Show wind controller. There we go. It's in our workspace. Uh, we want to go ahead activate that. I'm going to put this on, let's say, 7,000 again. Uh, turbulence is quite high. 30. Again, you can play around with that. Uh, see what it does, how it interacts with the garment. But now if I click on simulate, there we go. So maybe 7,000 is a bit too high. So let's put that maybe on 3,000. 
Uh, but you guys can see, and again, we can render this out. So maybe there's a there's a character that maybe you've got a character that's by a cliff or something standing by a cliff and the cape is just blowing in the wind or you just have a standalone image we can stop it right over there and we've got it in that motion uh, where the wind was blowing it and then we can increase select that increase the particle distance to get all those nice folds and uh, yeah that's just another way to create some dynamic uh, drapery using the the wind modifier wind controller and from here again I'm just going to select all of this and I can bring it back I would obviously I'll bring it back once I get my cape in a position that I'm happy with and then we can just right click unfreeze and uh, we should be good to go but there was just another example and like I said guys you can uh, save whoa <laughs> alright uh, that ass though <laughs> but yeah like I said guys uh, you can uh, you can go ahead and uh, render this out as an animation save it out in that alembic format and take it over to other programs so just a cool way to use marvelous designer to actually do animation so i hope you guys have learned something useful from this and as always stay tuned for some more tutorials all right thank you for watching and goodbye <laughs>